Get off the freaking net! And welcome to the Blaze On Nation, where the World Wide Web and Real Life World collide and brings current events to you and takes it all into debate. With your host from the depths, JBJ Blaze. And welcome back to Blaze On Nation after weeks of a bit of a hiatus. This is episode 10, recorded on. December 28th, 2013, and this is JBJ Blaze here with a guest. You can see him in our new um, setup on the video version of the podcast. Cheddarface, who has been a longtime moderator of the Dead Workers Party, and yeah. 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 I'm, I'm a snowflake. <laughs> or, or as your picture shows a face of cheddar. A that's smiley actually, face of cheddar. Jeez, because Swiss cheese is really the only one that's got holes in it. But, whatever. Mm-hmm. But, first of all, happy holidays, everybody. I apologize for not having done up an episode earlier, but things have gone on and crap. And, so... It's about... Almost the new year. Happy Christmas to everybody. Happy yeah, he... Boxing Day to Canadians. And that's that. That's all the song I'm gonna do. I, I'm actually, not confident enough. Wait, Pardon? I actually do have a question. What, um, what is Boxing Day? Well, in Canada we do Boxing Day. I hear Americans just skip it. They don't yeah, even acknowledge it? it. But like, oh. but what is it? Wow, I was just told I can announce the show in another group. How about that? But anyhow, so, yeah, how, how's your week been, Chatterface? It's been pretty good. Christmas was great. Got uh, a, lot of, a lot of games, actually, from... From some of my Steam friends, uh, Two Man Two gave me. Oh, crap, I don't remember. Oh, Cargo Commander. Uh, Random Yasha gave me Little Inferno, and I got Super Meat Boy from Zan. I spent a lot of money on the presents this year, though. I spent way too much. But you how know, much did you spend? Uh, probably. And when I take in all of my internet friends and all of my family members and all my real life friends, probably over two hundred dollars. But I got a lot of stuff, so I'm not upset. And how about you? Um, me, I got one new game from my brother, Civilization Five, and awesome. I got a new wallet and a whole bunch. Well, nice. not a whole bunch of stuff, but enough stuff. And I'm yeah. still waiting. I I'm thinking probably just get me a DVD file thing f to watch Carrie, because I can't find any DVD copies in the store, so... Yeah. But anyhow, yeah. let's get into the topics for today in the rundown. Brace yourselves, it's the Rundown. Alright, so in the Rundown, we have a couple things going on. Or maybe not so many. We have the whole crisis with the YouTube content ID system. Oh man, it's a bloodbath. And then, after that, the whole thing crapper going on with the Duck Dynasty. Uh, I, I'm sure you could maybe call it temporary suspension of Phil. And yeah, that's pretty much the up. whole thing going on today, well tonight, because it's nighttime right now, so. You got a couple of more articles in here, but we'll get to them as we get to them. Yep, well we won't do all of the articles, maybe the even what happened on the 12th, well, it was reported on CNN on the 12th, 
that Kim Jong Un had gotten his uncle executed, and I just got a notification from Steam. Go away, Steam notifications. I'm busy. Professional podcasting brought to you by JBJ Blaze. <laughs> exactly. And now let's get into. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm not gonna tweak the settings. Too lazy. And. Digging down. Let's get to the details, shall we? Now, I haven't gotten that bumper ever set up before, but I finally did. And actually, come to think of it, I also got some bumpers done up for my other podcast, The Cookie Conundrum. So I'm quite happy about that. And so, in the details, first we'll talk about the content ID system, which has been under major beat down by many YouTubers, including um, Angry Joe Show, Boogie2988, um, Captain Sparkles has done a video about it, and feel free to turn your volume up a bit, Chatter, because I can barely hear you. Actually, something interesting I, I watched the other day was um, Hi Res, uh, the game developer that did Tribes Ascend and most recently Smite. Um, they started doing a new web series that's like, uh, what was it? It was like Enter Minion or something. And it's like, um, it's chronicling, uh, it's like the fictional intern in their offices. And the first episode was about the content ID thing and how they weren't allowed to post videos of their own game because YouTube was being dumb about it, and I thought that was pretty clever. Aha. Uh-huh. But, um, so... My background info on the Content ID system is basically it's a bot going around on YouTube. Anything, whether it's tags on a video or something or other, or content in a video like music or even footage, it will get tagged just by the content ID system or whatever ID is on the video. Um, I'm not too sure about those yards of it, but um, what goes on there is that a, the, a copyright holder, even one that the creator of the video has never heard of, which has happened quite often in some of these cases, um, what has gone on is it ends up all this money being made from the video, if any money, is now going to the copyright holder of the media. So whether it's the video game, so the developers, or the music. And I will apologize if you can hear anything in the background unfortunately <laughs> my microphone picks up voices from behind me yeah, the, the prostitutes and, that Jay tied up and hid in his closet are trying to get out so just bear with us yes and I unfortunately have to share a room but I guess I'll just have to cope with it <laughs> but um <laughs> It fortunately hasn't affected some people, like Captain Sparkles, as he said, hasn't affected him yet. Although he has had copyright issues like with Minecraft Cell. Do you remember that one, Cheddarface? Oh yeah, that everybody remembers that one. That was like the first real example of this thing getting out of hand. He still hasn't... Has he gotten the rights back to that yet? Has he... Um... So far, he has re-uploaded Minecraft style, and there hasn't been any new claims on it. So, that sounds fortunate at the least. Well, yeah, well, it's, what's the, what the worst thing is, is that there's several uh, independent developers that have been CID'd for their own, their own videos or their own games. Like, some people will make a game and they'll post a video of it and it gets content ID'd because... God even knows what, but... Oh, you, you know approaching Nirvana? Yeah. That, he had made a post on Twitter the other day, I might be able to link to it in the show notes, but um, what's happened 
with his videos is they got claimed by the content ID system. And the yeah, funny just, thing with... is that his content is completely his. Or at yeah, least just, from my there's knowledge. There's nothing, really, there's nothing really behind them doing this. They have no real basis to do this. They, they can't even explain why because they're doing it literally to the people that are producing the content of their own thing. So it's like, you know, maybe if they weren't doing that, you could say, well, they're protecting the people that made it, but this is just ridiculous. Yeah, anyone could tell me it's protection, and I... It, it's just bull crap. N not protection at all, because now if it's giving all the revenue to these other companies, like many, like these YouTubers have said, well, they're the ones who put their money into it, like Angry Joe, he has costumes and the setup and everything, and has to do all the editing of it after, and then after that, all that hard work that they should be paid for, a company that might have only had a tiny bit in it because of their copyrighted footage or background music or whatever it is. Just because of that tiny bit, they all of a sudden get all of it. It's yeah. it's one of those um, um, sit on your couch and get paid a lot of money things. Home wealth solution. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, like, um, Boogie2988 said, uh, was that, you know, Minecraft is the best example of this, because Notch just basically said up front, you know, you guys feel free to make videos about my game and monetize them, and it's one of the best known, it's like, it's one of the things that almost every Let's Player has done a video about, and they, the people Including that Including myself. Well, I yeah, even do just, Let's Plays for yeah. Minecraft. It's got over 9 million subscribers, and that was a lie. But, like, people that do these videos get tons and tons of views and then the people that watch it go and say hey I want to buy this game and that's really the only reason that Minecraft has gotten as much money as it has and when you think about it like the people that do these videos of any game are the people that are the fans of the game they're the biggest fans and the people that watch those videos are fans too so by taking the way the right to make these videos and earn a living from basically pouring your heart into this thing you love you're destroying your fan base and the people that watch that person are not going to want to buy any more games, and that person's going to want to buy any more, so you're pretty much just screwing yourself over. I like the way you put it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, because on one side, the company is getting free promotion, because they're not paying for any of this. Like, again, with Minecraft, Mojang, when it came to promoting Minecraft, they didn't... They might have. Uh, I I don't think they spent even no. one cent on advertising no, their game, advertising other than it was videos made by community members. Yeah, and like they, the, probably as far as advertising goes, tweeting about it and having it on their own site. But further than that, it wasn't ever them doing it. It was always some person who thought the game was cool doing a, a video about it on YouTube or a news article about it. Yeah, and it's 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 really just a win-win. I mean, I get to play this game I love and make videos of it and get money from it, and in turn, all these people that watch me go and buy the game, and Mojang gets free customers from it. Or, or in other cases, for crappy games, crappy developers don't give a crap to um do, um, watch me, good development for their game, and then a YouTuber makes a video about it, and craps on it, T Total Biscuit, for example, with Day One, day one. <laughs> yes, oh, that, and they were, they just, they spit in his face, they said, no, if you're gonna, it's funny, because they were, it was, it was, hypo it was hypocrisy, they said, okay, yeah, feel free to make a video about our game. But then it turned out what they meant was, feel free to make a video about our game if you are going to make a video about our game saying it's great. If and, you're not proud of the product. And originally I was thinking, you know what, this looks like something cool, because Gary's Incident 
Is that something Gary's Eric, mod? I, yeah, I thought that too. I looked at it. And, and it, it drew me towards it. And then I'm seeing all this stuff saying, um, like, Gary's SE incident. Um, that was... Uh, WTF was, is <laughs> the game. Pout, right? Yeah, good pout, really good. Like and, and even seeing that combat system... Uh, I'm not sure oh. what to use to describe it, other than stale. Okay. But the thing is, though, I mean, like, I, so I saw the game in the Steam store, and I'm like, okay, I want to look this game up. I saw Beard Get a Pop's video, and I saw Total Biscuits' video, and I'm like, okay, I don't want to buy this game. But now that I know what the developer did, not only do I not want to buy Gary's Incident, I don't ever want to buy something they make, ever. That, that's the other thing, too, being... Personally, and I'm not sure if I did talk about this on episode 9, but, oh well, if I did, because I get to talk, it w talk about it with you, but, um, I, I, personally, as a game developer myself, even though my game's been very slow in development, Aftermath, I take some personal offense to that, because first to get their game out there with their Kickstarter, the developer pays money to their own Kickstarter. The CEO <laughs> paid his own money towards it, which like, why just makes bother? me laugh. It's just sad. It's such it's a just sad. Way. And then they go on green light, and they're bribing users to upvote, because upvote our game and you get a free copy. And then they say, yes, you can do this with our game, and you can do that with our game, and then, boom, negative reviews, and then, no, take no, it no. down now, take it down. And not only that, but it's, it's not ever been outright stated, but, I mean, come on, there's definitely something dishonest about the whole Gary's incident. I mean, that definitely sounds like it's related to Gary's mod. It seems like... <laughs> they were... I, I don't think it's accidental. I think they were trying to get people to buy that like Gary's mod. It can't be accidental. Yeah, who, who knows, maybe they were thinking, uh, let's go Carrie's incident with a girl, and then, wait, well, there's a game that has Gary's name in it, so if we use that name, and instead of a woman using a guy named Gary, we could sell some. Indeed. And then lie about it. Yeah, the the Wildra in the chat room brings up a good point that this is very reminiscent of uh, the whole SOPA thing. Yeah, the, yeah, there is a lot of stuff in what the U.S. government trying to bring that or related SOPA stuff back up. It's like, just leave off with that. It's not gonna work. The internet blacklist bill, SOPA, PIPA, you name it, they've already been screwed out of there. So, what's the point? It's never stopped them before. Very true. I mean, we've seen it happen. The government doesn't really care. <laughs> yeah, I could say so many things about the U.S. government. Oh, so could I. Uh, I could also say a lot about the Minnesotan government. First, the Internet, Bla Internet Blacklist Bill law, which involved something of a pop star that was the only ever smart thing he said. Which pop star was this? Justin Bieber. Ugh. When he said that... Um... Kim Klobuchar and... Uh, I, I, I'll put it this way, don't hate me for saying this, cause, you know what, she should have been in bars. And, Poop. I can't control what Bieber says, but that's what he said, is she should be thrown in jail. Cause the internet blacklist bill would even send Justin Bieber to jail, cause that's how he rose to fame. What's the, what's the story here? I don't, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with this. Okay, so the internet blacklist bill, um, Posting videos on the internet of anything containing music or any of that um, would be taken down. So even like a video of a baby, a cute baby, dancing to music in the background would be taken down. Actually, no, not just that, but that would also be 
uh, an illegal or legal offense, you'd get put in jail just for that because there's that copyrighted content. And because J Justin Bieber, how he wrote so famous his videos where he sang to copyrighted music, would land him in jail just because it's got copyrighted material in it, or even video game let's play. So basically the same thing that's been going on for a long time, except for not only... Except for rather than just on YouTube and losing all your money and everything, or having your videos taken down, whether that gets done still, but not only that, but you get put in jail for it. Good. And that's what was going on with that. Or that this other law that had come up a bit ago that I found in show notes at um, UCB Canada, which is a Christian radio station I've done co-op at. And um, this one tidbit was that in Minnesota, and I just saw that I've been spitting on my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and what's been oh, going on with that is that you can no longer have sofas in your front yard. What? Yeah. But there's a lot of stupid laws like that. Like, you can't have a whale. If, if you have an outdoor porch in your front yard, or even just have a sofa... So, if you have a sofa on your outdoor porch in your front or whatever yard, or have it just on the grass or anywhere, it's a legal offense. Just for having it out there instead of inside your own home. Sorry about that, my phone started ringing. Ah. Yeah, that reminds well, me of the old days when I... Oh, and I'm not sure if I announced this, but... This is also the first place on Nation with my new blue microphone, which is why I sound so much better than my previous episodes. Amazing. It's Blue, amazing. Blue Snowball ICE, I highly recommend it. Just be aware that any background noises will probably pe be picked up. But if you get it from Staples, <laughs> you can get it for a pretty darn good price. Highly I'm recommend it. Cheap ass pair of... Oops, sorry. <laughs> cheap <laughs> pair of headphones. Headset thing. Uh, a donkey is an ASS, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was in a hymn at church tonight, because um, I forget what it was called. Um, I, I forget what the song was called, but a verse of it had ox and ass. It's part yeah, of the Bible, well, and it, it's a donkey. Speaking of... Um to segue, you know, in a sense, uh, there's a the an article in the doc. Uh, looks like it's the fifth link down. Fifth link down. Good. Talk about that one. Is it the one about Kim Jong Un's uncle? No. No. Next one. Oh, the. Person who declares that Jesus and Santa are Caucasian. Well, it's not a person. It's Megyn Kelly, the person who the internet can't get enough of making fun of. <laughs> no, I haven't really heard much about Megyn Kelly other than she's, she's on Fox. Thing. She's on Fox News, which is a conservative uh, television news station, oh. which basically means that everybody thinks that they should make fun of pretty much everything that happens in that. And not only that, but they should also take it out of context, which is exactly what's happening in this article. Um, if you look, uh, they cut up the, the sound that she's... They cut up the, the video where she says what she says, which is basically that... What she says in the video that you have, they cut it up so she says Jesus was white. Which is, of course, not the truth. I mean... Who knows was, what color Jesus is? And let alone... And let alone, so, what does it matter what color he is? 
Well, that's the thing, because up until this point, we were okay as a country. We were okay with assuming just naturally that Santa and Jesus would be white people. But it seems now that in what I like to call the age of Kwanzaa, that that's no longer okay, and that somehow that is offensive to anything that isn't white. Yeah, or even, do you remember far back when Madonna had her, um, uh, Like a Virgin music video? Uh, no, I wasn't alive then. She, um, the, it had received a lot of criticism because it had portrayed, it had you, a black person played Jesus in the video, and it had received a lot of criticism because, well, it's a, a whole bunch of crap that, oh, they shouldn't have a black person be Jesus. He wasn't well, yeah. black or some bull crap like that. He was most likely a dark tan, just to say, just, just put that out there. Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking, but then I mean, again, in any case... <laughs> that's the point. The point is, it doesn't matter, but the people that made this article about her saying this thought that she... Well, they, they, they wanted to take it out of context. She's basically saying, yeah. up until this point, it's been okay to naturally assume that Santa and, and Jesus and other people... Well, I almost said religious figures, but Santa's not really a religious figure... <laughs> just to assume that they were white and portray them in that way. And, and now it seems like that's doing a disservice to anybody that isn't white. And, like, you think about, like, Kwanzaa. You know what Kwanzaa is? Mm, not that? really. Define it for me. It's a, it's a uh, quote-unquote holiday um, that comes around the same time in, as uh, Christmas and Hanukkah and them. It's in December. And it was made in the 70s, um by a, essentially a black supremacist who was in jail for torture and wanted a holiday only for black people. He changed his name so it sounded more African and he created this holiday. And nobody has said anything about it because... You Wait, what's like, holiday? It's Kwanzaa. K -W oh! Z-A-A. Uh, I'll give that a quick define yeah. with my dictionary app, and I just spelled it wrong, probably. Imagine. Imagine if you tried to make a holiday that was only, that was to celebrate white people. Oh. Oh. I did spell it wrong. I put in Q-U-A-N-Z-A <laughs> and it's actually K-W-A-N-Z-A-A. -A. He made it sound he made it so that it would sound like it was a traditional African holiday when it was really created less than 40 years ago in California by an American. Mm. But it's just, it's, just same, it's along the same vein as this story. It's like, up until this point, it's been okay to just have the default be white or whatever, what have you, even anything. But times are changing. And suddenly it's doing a disservice. And now I will segue into probably <laughs> our, our last article. Or, or do you still want to talk Fine, about man. this I one? Can talk all night. Can keep going I'm thinking we get to the North Korea one. I don't know anything about this. Okay, so what happened was um, Kim Jong-un, the ruler of North Korea... Yeah, I, I know who His he is. <laughs> uncle got executed because he um, basically was trying to overthrow his own nephew, is what's going on here. Wow. Yep. I, I swear, it would have been so cool, though, if his uncle did overthrow him. But my, my, my view of North Korea currently is basically just a modern day Germany, uh, modern day Nazi Germany in a way. It's more like Soviet Russia. Well, I suppose that. Then again, I don't really know too much about that in terms of well, that's relation. that people don't actually, a lot of people surprisingly don't actually remember is that Stalin had way more people killed than Hitler did. 
Ah. Well, then again, was... mostly all the people Hitler had killed were all Jews. Yeah, that's the thing. Stalin just killed whoever he wanted to. And that's why history remembers Hitler as being worse. I mean, not to debate the morals of either of these men. They were both terrible, terrible people. But the reason that we remember Hitler as being worse is because he specifically targeted the, the Jews as a group of people that he despised and viewed as unpure. Whereas uh, Stalin you, just killed everyone. Then again, the other thing, too, is that Hitler not only hated the Jews, but anyone who opposed him. So whether it was... Probably blacks other too. religion. Yeah, blacks. Systematically um, just genocide. The Jews, the blacks, the homosexuals, of which there were a lot less then. But. Yeah. Nobody liked them back then. But that's yeah. because we were all just... Just unknowledged. Like, it, 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 not even yeah. just with that, but even, like, mental disorders. Nowadays, those are becoming more widely known. Yeah, well, I mean, you can you can take anything and call it a mental disorder. There's a disorder for everything now, and people want to medicate you for everything you do when it's really just bad parenting. Yeah, I, I found this one article in a magazine this other day about um, this one book or whatever that basically marks any um, normal child behavior as a syndrome. So whether the kid is throwing a tra if the kid is just throwing a normal temper tantrum, they got a disorder. Yeah, they call everything some kind of disorder, and they want to institutionalize you and or tell you your parents that they're raising you wrong or something. Or just... well, that that you you can't help what you're. Well, actually, yeah, it pretty much just goes with that the whole parenting thing. It's about, it is, it's largely about parenting, frankly. Yeah, your children are the people that you tell them, that you show them how to be. Mm -hmm. And if you don't show them how to be decent, functioning members of society, then they won't be decent, functioning members of society. Exactly. And that's how we get, for instance, you have this other article, Adam Lanza. Yeah. That's how you get people like him. People are, they still don't know this, this is the mystery of Adam Lanza. I mean, there's not really a lot of mystery here. There was something wrong with him. Yeah, I I found very... this article the other day. I might even link it in the show notes, but from USA Today, they had launched even more investigation, or at least there's been more investigation with the new town stuff, and basically just a bunch of back-and-forth crap about who and how yeah how when it's Adam really, Lanza was before the shooting. It doesn't seem it doesn't seem like it needs to be investigated into. It's just like what happened with uh, Jared Lofner back three four years ago with the Gabrielle Gifford's shooting. I mean, oh, I don't remember that one. <laughs> well, it was a similar thing. He he was a terrible person and he killed a bunch of people, and he's still going through court stuff. I mean, he's obviously not right. Same with Sandy, Sandy or Sandy Hook shooter guy Adam Lanza. They, it was his mother's fault for giving him access to a gun. Yeah, that, Somebody, that's like, the thing too. Like, and people are complaining about gun control. The only control there should have been for guns here is that the mother actually have proper security for the firearm. Well, the thing is, it's not anything to do with guns. It doesn't matter how much the government controlled the gun by the time she bought it. Guaranteed, if there wasn't a that gun at his disposal at that time, he would have done the same thing with a knife or with, you know, yeah, that, that's... Bad well, people the... are bad people, no matter what. Kill killers exactly. are killers. And taking the guns away from the people that aren't killers... Like, a criminal yeah, is a criminal. Just... Right? Yeah. If you make it illegal to buy a gun, they don't care. They're breaking the law by killing people anyway. So they don't care that it's illegal to have a gun. Meanwhile, the people that could defend themselves with the guns no longer have the ability to purchase them. And you know what? If you ban all guns, there's still people with knives, people with bats. And, and there's still criminals. 
a criminal is a criminal, and if somebody's going to kill a bunch of people with a gun, he has the same capacity to do it with a knife. Exactly. And I'm and probably not saying exactly a lot, but... Well, he doesn't care about killing a bunch of people. I don't see why he would care about stealing a knife, uh, stealing a gun. That's basically what it comes down to. Yeah. A criminal is a criminal, and no amount, no amount of laws you make can change that. And something funny that I find with this stuff, too, is that the, the, it's also partly the media, too, because they barely ever say a darn thing about these other crimes that occur other than the ones that involve firearms. Like, there was a one earlier this year with the hitchhiker named Kai who used an axe on a racist who ran over a black person well, you know, the thing is, they talk about how many people guns have killed yearly. You know, automobiles, automobile accidents have killed over ten times more people than guns every year. Are you going to ban cars? <laughs> yeah, or, or, or even, like, a big percentage has, a big percentage of it, and it's not the biggest, but one of the big contributors is drunk drivers. Yep. Are you going to ban alcohol? Are you going to ban cars? Are you going to ban obesity? Obesity uh, are, kills people. Uh, are you going to ban cancer? Cancer kills people. Cancer uh, are, kills we more people. are we going to have another uh, reappeal of that one amendment after you already made Obesity. one amendment to ban a alcohol? Uh, another amendment Seven. to reappeal it? And then maybe another one to reban it? <laughs> Yeah, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. It's just going back and forth. They're not getting r rid of the underlying problem. Bad people are bad people, and you can't make a law to fix that. What you can do is make a law that makes good people less effective. Mm-hmm. The best oh, way for people to try is that good men do nothing. And actually, I just remembered this other topic, getting on the top, uh, topic of drunk driving. Um, actually, quickly, I will check the previous show notes from another episode, just to make sure that I have not talked about this. But it <laughs> was something to do with drunk driving, and I forgot that this that the main blog it just has a link to the engine show notes. Was it Ethan Kaus? Um, the 16-year-old in Texas? Say more? It says, uh, this article says, the Texas teenager who killed four people while driving drunk. Well, yes, that's the one! You hit okay, the any spot. Joke after his defense argued he's a poor little rich kid and isn't responsible for his actions. That's great. Okay, so it, yeah, we did talk well, about all that YouTube... Well, a lot of that YouTube stuff other than the content ID system and episode 9, or at least I did, but... Yeah, let's go talking about this one. Well, at what age do we say somebody is responsible for their own actions, I guess? That's what it boils down to. I mean, it's widely ag agreed that the age of consent is 18 for most things, but... I mean, in this situation, it seems that this person not getting punished is a crime. Exactly, and... The, the, Some of, it's definitely largely his parents. And it, it and is absolutely it, his parents. They, they're coming up with all this stuff that, oh, he had a rich family, his parents were rich as crap and everything. And they're trying to come up with this stupid syndrome. I forget what they called it, but... Well, here's what it says. An expert, an expert testified that Couch was raised as a spoiled brat who was allowed to drink at a very young age and started driving at 13, and his parents are responsible for his behavior. That's all well and good, but... I mean... How is he going to learn to be held accountable for his own actions if even the system, even the government, his parents are obviously... Don't have a... Don't give two sh oh, Sorry, don't give two craps about his his well-being, or because they gave him access to alcohol at the age of 16, and let him start driving when he was 13, but even okay. the government isn't making him be forced to be held accountable. So how is he going to learn that there are consequences for your actions, I guess? He killed four yeah. people. And he that's killed. that's one of the things that p 
peeves me off the most, and uh, you, you don't have to refrain from being peeved off about this, because the night I watched a video about this, I was so peeved. Now I'm just thinking, I gotta talk about this in my next podcast. He, I mean, I don't really think that there's any, anything more to say about this. He killed four people and he's not getting punished for it. it I, it's like... Okay, the, maybe jail time, maybe not uh, capital punishment. I give him jail time for life. There is something to be said for Juvenile Hall. There is something to be said for under the age of 18, not getting punished as an adult. Fine. But if you don't do something about this, they're not doing it. They're literally they're really not doing anything. They are putting him on probation. He's going to an expensive private treatment facility as recommended by his lawyers. But they, if they don't do something about this now, and he learns that he can get away with this, killing four people... Drinking alcohol at the age of 16, driving with... I'm sure he doesn't have a license, but I don't Dr- know. Drunk driving? My, my simple well, view of do? that whole thing is the sentence, no matter what, for any drunk driving should always be life in prison. That person is making a selfish as heck choice Well, to... the thing is, what kind of... What is he going to do when he gets older and has access to things like guns and explosives? Oh, gosh. Right now, he's only 16. That that day would be a day in hell. But then, they're not punishing him at all. He thinks, oh, this is okay. He might not be thinking that it's okay because he killed four people, and I don't think anybody in their right mind could think that, but he thinks he can get off scot-free because that's the only experience he has with this. So when he gets older in five, ten years, what's he going to do when he can easily get a gun because he has the money and he has the wherewithal? What can he, what's he going to do when he goes to, this, goes to a gun shop, because he's in Texas, mind you, and he can buy, you know, an M4, an AR-15? What's he going to do? Oh, and, the, and as for his parents, my, my mother had came up with as well um, that... Probably the parents of the victims, highly likely, if this really is how this bugger's gonna get for a sentence, they're gonna file a lawsuit, and I hope to God they do, if that's how the bugger gets. It's not so much, for me, yes, I think he should be punished, but that's not really why this upsets me as much as it does. It's just, if we don't, and this... It's really, it kind of comes back to why I'm upset with the government right now because of what they're doing, because it all comes back to teaching people how to be accountable. If you don't teach people how to be accountable, then they won't, well, they won't learn how to be accountable, they won't be responsible, they won't be smart, they won't know what they're doing, and that's how you get people like this guy and the Sandy Hook shooter and Jared Loeffner and even going back further, the people that were responsible, uh, that guy's name I can't remember now. For the Columbine shooting? No, it was some, somebody in the 80s that they still haven't found. It was responsible for some plane crashes. Uh, I actually don't remember. I'll look that up. But it's not important. It's just when you don't teach people how to be re- accountable and responsible for themselves, then they don't like that, and they kill people, and our system doesn't punish them. And that that's something I've noticed that's highly ironic about the court system, or at least quite a few of them in the U.S., is they're going to charge high um, sentences on the people that do things that are just so little, no one's gonna, no one should give a crap, and then they charge such little on those that actually do something serious, mm-hmm. like the well, Justin. It has to do with the way that the media treats this, because I mean, you, they show. I'm going to bring up the, the token example of, of this day and age because it's, it's one of the most controversial ones, but uh, Trayvon Martin. Oh, yes. George Zimmerman is not a hero. I'm not going to say that because he's not. But he's not a bad person either. He did what any normal person would do. And the thing is, people think of him as a terrible person now, and his life is ruined because of this, because of the way that the media and the court system treated it, because... When you look up a picture of Trayvon Martin, you don't see Trayvon Martin. You see 10-year-old Trayvon Martin. You see 7, 6, 5-year-old Trayvon Martin in first grade. 
that's the pictures they show of him. They show pictures of this first grader, not this kid, this punk. I don't care what color he was, because it doesn't matter. He was 17, I think. He was going to yep. K. And actually, the thing that they don't report, and it's I understand why, but he went he went to the to Circle K for two things. I don't remember what one of them was, but one of them was watermelon iced tea, which they don't report because you know it's funny. Well, black people like watermelon, but what they don't realize, those two things mixed with a third ingredient were what you I don't even remember. They made drugs. There were common ways to make drugs, and he was obviously on them. And the pictures that they have of him covered in tattoos and piercings, slipping off the camera while holding money. He was not the little kid that they made him out to be. Hmm. I never knew that Trayvon Martin was like that before he was he died, not. But... He went up to this guy and started beating him up. Oh, yeah, I know that part. Beat it down, said he was going to kill him on his way back from the store buying things to make drugs. And he got shot. And he died. And now, because of the things that the court system has shown and how the, the way that his family is choosing to, to support him... And the way the media is putting it out is that George Zimmerman killed yeah, a and, kid. And like I said, and so George, him. Zimmerman's not a hero. George Zimmerman's not my hero. He might not even be that great of a person. But he's not a bad person. For, he's not a bad person for this, at least. I don't know. I don't know anything about the guy. He's not a hero, but he is not the villain in this story, like they're making him out to be. And he's now a, he's, like, he's not a hero, but he's not a criminal. No, he will never be able to find a job now. His family will be ostracized for as long as this story is remembered. And, and, and so far, from the sounds of it, his wife has the, the has saying, other yeah. had plans of divorcing him or something yes. or other. His life is totally ruined by his decision to save it. It's ironic how that works. Yes. And, and well, the government's not helping either because you remember you've seen those statements that Obama made, you know, I could be Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin could be my son. <laughs> it's just... Oh, Obama's comments and, on anything and, just uh, makes me laugh. Well, actually, it doesn't make me laugh. It just... Makes me sad. But George Zimmerman... <laughs> He was caught between a rock and a hard place. He could either let this druggy punk beat him to death, or he could save his own life and in doing so make it not worth living. Exactly. Well, we are probably good for timing now. Yeah, um, you got that one more we had to talk about, remember? Um, Phil? Phil Robertson? Oh, yes, right. It's, that works well with our topics of the day. <laughs> our controversial. So anyway, uh, recap the story for us. Oh, um, I don't have a link to that, but what's but going know. on is he, I guess, was asked by a magazine to tell them stuff or whatever, and then all of a sudden, a comment on his views of homosexuality, which people have seen as that it's in, that it's against homosexuality. Oh, it, very, it, it was very much against homosexuality. I suck at reading between lines, but... Well, no, he, he basically, he made, he made comparisons to bestiality, he told, he quoted, uh, I think it was Leviticus, and talked about how it's against uh, God's will, and um, they pretty much just said, you know, I, he basically said, you know, I hate the sin, I don't hate the sinners. He said, you know, I will never disrespect somebody because they are a homosexual, but I myself can never respect the idea. And, and then the, the network said, well, that's not your choice to make. You can't be on our show anymore. <laughs> And then so, there's all the debate about whether they made the right choice to kick him out or not, and the reality is, and I, and obviously a lot of people have different opinions on it, but it wasn't the right choice, because that, that's not what the show is about. 
No. Well, the thing is, what happened to freedom of speech? That too. He, he uh, was I in was... an interview. Completely unaffiliated with A&E. Completely unaffiliated with the show. And he's not allowed to say what he thinks. Yeah, like, if someone's against something, it... it... It's even said in the Ten Commandments, you shall not lie. So, yeah, well, should he lie that he's against the idea of it? Well, I mean, the thing is, I guarantee you, if he had said, I fully support... Oh, you're cutting out. <laughs> ...homosexuality, A&E would have said, we, you're great, awesome. If he had, if he had said anything, if he had, if he had said the opposite of this comment, there wouldn't be this, this back. It looks like your stream just went offline. It did. All right. No, it's still live for me. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, oh. Right. Now it did. <laughs> well, basically, if he had made comments that were pro LGBT, it would have been fine. Nobody would have cared. But because he said the. It's basically you're you're entitled to your own opinion as long as it agrees with mine. That's what they're saying by the, by saying this. Yeah, that, that's what a lot that's what a lot of this a lot of people have come up with is that you can keep your opinion just as long as I agree with it. Yeah, and I mean not to get into anything like whether or not I agree with him or anything about this whole thing. I think it was his choice to say what he wanted to say. And I respect him for being brave enough to say what he thought. Because he is a man of God, he is a man of, of faith and deep religious integrity. And he even said, you know, this show has been... When I first when they first wanted to do this show, it was really invasive of my privacy and my entire family's privacy. But it's been a great thing for me because now I can show that show my faith on television. It's one of the most watched TV shows and I can show that we're a Christian family and that we're successful and we love each other and we're good people. And I'm like, good him. And when they kicked him off, he didn't care. He said, well, you know what? I said what I thought. This show's not going to be around that long anyway. It's a TV show. Whatever. <laughs> I respect him for that. He said what he wanted to say. He took the consequences of it. And in that case, I'd say he took the consequences very well. Yeah, he took it like a man. Like a man. Well, I guess that'll be all for this episode. Hope you all yeah. had a very Merry Christmas. And Indeed. in shout-outs, which I don't have a bumper for quite yet, but ah! I, I have <laughs> shout-outs involving condolences to the families, and I know the these um their deaths happened a bit ago, but Paul Walker from the Fast and Furious series and Nelson yeah. Mandela. Great I'm, people. I mean, I, offering your condolences to the families of Nelson Mandela is doing the man a disservice. Offering your condolences to the entire to the entirety of South Africa, maybe. And, and I. I barely watch any of Fast and Furious, but I I hear you're a great person, and I I do plan on watching some Fast and Furious myself pretty soon. So my condolences I to your the family. First one. Yeah, I've That's I've it, seen it. a bit of it, but not too much. But I don't think it was the biggest movie. But I definitely think it's sad. It's 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 a tragedy when anybody dies at that age. It's yeah. just, it's sad. He, he was no matter who way too young. Even it's sad when anybody dies before their time. Unless they yeah. were, you know, Joseph Stalin. Yep, and then other shoutouts go to um, ffsplit.com. I'm still waiting for them to add in the feature where you can add in MP3 files and whatnot. But ffsplit.com, it's like XSplit, but a bit more lightweight, and it's free. So check them out. There is also... Um, I got a shout-out. 
Also, the Just a Gaming Blog, Just a Gaming Blog with two G's dot WordPress dot com, I believe. They have some good stuff on there. IndieGamers.co.uk and Trading Revolution, which is a Steam group, and you can follow the Twitter feed, which, although I'm not sure if there's much there, or at least not yet, at Trading Revo. And I think that's... Another shout-out for um, OBS, Open uh, Broadcaster Software, uh, this month I've been having... Up until this point, I stream with XSplit, and they've been great, but it just stopped working, and I couldn't get it to work. And a friend of mine, uh, the Crystal Crow, suggested OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, and it's worked like a charm. It's free, it's excellent, and if you're a streamer, I highly recommend it. And also my cousin told me about it, too, because he uses that for streaming StarCraft II or League of Legends. It's great. Which he can check him out at his... His Twitch channel is Benjia, B-E-N-J-I-A-H. And I think that's all I have for shoutouts. Do you have any more? Yeah, there's this really cool guy on uh, Twitter. It's uh, twitter.com slash cheddarface underscore. <laughs> He's pretty good. I want to have his babies. Uh, right. Pimp yourself out. <laughs> and uh, twitch.tv slash cheddarface underscore. That's all I have. Yes, be also, sure to check him out, and we might even be doing some more cards against humanity sometime, <laughs> if you want. <laughs> do, do be warned, there are many suggestive and possibly offensive themes in the game, but... Oh man, that was fantastic. That, that's the whole fantastic. comedy of it. It's <laughs> 17, 17 plus. <laughs> it is really correct. Also, one more thing on my blog that's been pretty deadly go about is uh, M-A-A-S-O-O dot net. So go head over there and it's way cool. Alright. JBJ, it's been a pleasure, privilege and dinner. Heaven. Good show. Yep. Oh, hold on. I cannot believe it's not in here. Um, hold on. I gotta find my outro. What do you mean you want more? Or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonation.tk for more articles and show notes, the flippin' awesome.engine.com slash BNP for show notes, and to sponsor a future episode. Did you find it? Did you find it? Did you find yes, it? I did find it. Oh. And I just played it. Oh, I was I was talking through it, wasn't I? Eh, that's alright. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, uh, Merry Christmas, everybody, and hope you all have a Happy New Year, and excuse Chatterface's... Burping. Happy Kwanzaa. Oh, God. And, 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 and,